Good morning, everybody. I'd like you to turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 3 uh, and uh, get 1 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, we'll read first, and then <clears throat> Ephesians 3 by review. Um, Ephesians, or 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, we've been talking about the need to get to find out, to learn, to study, to know who and what God has made us in Christ. And that being established as believers is coming to understand the salvation doctrines and the sanctification doctrines as uh, laid down in the book of Romans. Paul, uh, when he wrote the book of Romans, said that he wrote it to the Roman churches to establish them. And this verse says, God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, coming unto the knowledge of the truth is what we're talking about in these messages, what we're uh, trying to study to, to have better understanding, exactly what information is it that Paul had in mind when he said that God would have us all to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Uh, st establishing believers, being uh, the, growing to spiritual maturity is, is an emphasis that Paul makes throughout the epistles because it's the, if we're to walk by faith and not by sight, there's an understanding from the Word of God that we have to have for the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us today. He leads us and guides our spirit, uh, confirming with our spirit uh, God's will for us, the, the who and what God has made us. Uh, when we walk by faith, and we walk by faith in the doctrine called the faith or the body of truth given to establish us. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 says that effectually works in you that believe. And so God the Holy Spirit intervenes today. Uh, God does intervene today during the dispensation of grace through his word. And God the Holy Spirit doesn't work apart from the Word of God, and the Word of God doesn't work apart from the Holy Spirit. This is a spiritual book that God has given to us. And God is, uh, doesn't force His will upon us. He doesn't force us to obey Him, serve Him, or love Him, or respond to Him and the salvation He's given to us as believers today. He chooses to deal with us as adult children with the indwelling Holy Spirit, our spirit being regenerated. The spiritual words of this book, if we submit to them and we access the truth of God's word to establish us by faith and walk in that truth, God uses that word to effectually work in us. That's it. God the Holy Spirit intervenes through God's word when we yield to it by faith and access it by faith and choose to walk in it. And it's, uh, that's where the Apostle Paul over there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he says that he prayed that the Lord remove, remove the thorn in his flesh three times and the response of God was, is, my grace is sufficient for thee, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So there's a power that God uses his word, he, he uh, effectually works in us when we trust the, the truth of God's word, uh, the gospel that we trusted in for our salvation. Uh, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So the gospel message in Romans chapter 1, it, the gospel is said to be the power of God unto salvation. And again, only when that believer trusts in that, that gospel message does God respond uh, to the faith of the believer to trust the gospel to regenerate their spiritual nature, uh, to uh, seal it, seal them in Christ, to make them in living union with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to indwell us as believers. So God responds to our faith in his word, but the word of God is the power of God. And Colossians 2 says, uh, I've got you in Ephesians, but I'm going to reference Colossians 2 as, a, again, a review. Uh, verse 6, As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. 
Now, how did you receive them? You trusted the gospel. You trusted his word, that gospel message that God is dispensing through the apostle of the Gentiles, the only apostle that God sent to proclaim the gospel that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. He, the apostle Paul, in Galatians 1, he says, he received that message directly from the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what he received, he, was, he did not learn from the other apostles. The other apostles preached Jesus Christ according to the prophetic program. The apostle Paul preached the Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. So God intervenes through his word today, but God doesn't force his word upon us. Uh, as some people believe that uh, once you get saved, God the Holy Spirit just gives you the wisdom and the understanding of his word to walk in supernaturally. And that's not the case. When you read the word of God written to you in Romans through Philemon, the explanation here is that we are to be rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as we've been taught abounding with thanksgiving. So there's a, a teaching ministry that God has for us as believers when we compare the scriptures uh, studying Romans through Philemon uh, and there are many other passages we could go to to review all this information that we've already covered uh, in this series. Um, and But I would like to uh, ask you to turn with me to Ephesians 3 now. We've talked about coming unto the knowledge of the truth, learning who and what God has made us in Christ. For the grace of God, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Romans chapter 5, I believe it's verse 2. That we can access God's grace today in our walk as believers. As ye have received him, so walk ye in him. We're to walk by faith in these truths to access the, the power of God and, his, his, and for that word to effectually work in us is when we, we need to access it by faith. Now, we said that coming unto the knowledge of the truth that the first year, especially, and we say first year, but we're talking about a growth process just to, to emphasize the need for any new believer to be established. That first year, they need to learn about how much God loves them, that they need to be loved. And so we're talking about we're going to go through some more passages this morning about the Lord Jesus Christ. We've gone through passages uh, previously how th the Father made public knowledge of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is his beloved Son in whom he is well pleased, that he loves his Son. The, the Son uh, heard from the Father. The Father taught the Son that his love for him. And the Son revealed the Father to the world. And what he reveals about the Father Number one, we know that the Godhead, we sang the hymn, Holy, 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 this morning. God is holy. He is separate from his creation. He is to be feared. Uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the, the God Almighty, the first thing that an that a unbeliever needs to know is that, that that unbeliever is a sinner and there are consequences for, for sin and that God, who's holy, cannot... Uh, accept man on the base because of his sin and he, that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ as a sacrifice as uh, to to be the mediator between God and man and that man should fear uh, the, the judgment for his sin because a holy God is going to have to punish that sin for eternity in the lake of fire unless that believer responds to God the Father's call to all men that he would have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. And when we respond to that call, we are made the sons of God, the children of God. But the goal is to, to, to now learn. You fear God, you trust the gospel that Christ died for your sins, you learn of his love in the gospel. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's a verse we're going to look at this morning. That's a love in the giving of his son in birth. 
uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're talking about learning the love of, of God as a believer. Realize how loved you are as accepted in the beloved, the moment you trust the gospel, that you are accepted in Christ. God loves his son and he loves all those that he's made one with his son. You are joint heirs with Christ. God loves you. And, and begin reading now in verse 14 of Ephesians 4. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. There's that, that uh, strengthening, that empowerment by God the Holy Spirit, his intervention today through his word in our inner man. Notice verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in what? In love. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend. There's comprehension. There's an understanding. There's being, that's the result of being taught by the Word of God, the Holy Spirit teaching us uh, with God's Word rightly divided, that ye may be rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Notice verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now notice the, the way his, uh, his closing here. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the, what? To the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So, Paul's prayer here, that we be rooted and grounded in love. That's learning who God is. Learning that you are loved in the Son. Learning that greatest demonstration of God's love for us is at Calvary. That that was the objective demonstration God loves the sons of Adam and Eve. We'll say enough to send his son as a sacrifice to pay for the sins of all men. That man might respond in faith to the gospel and, be, and that God's enemies could be made God's children and accepted into God's loving family. God loved the world and he gave his son in incarnation, in birth. And... Uh, we need to understand that. Be rooted and grounded in love. Understand God's love. That's what we need to focus on, learn, learning who and what God has made us in Christ. Go with me now to John chapter 18. Now, this part of the message, I want to focus some on... God will have, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, God will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Now, what is truth? We're to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's a specific truth that Paul is talking about, that God will have you to come into the knowledge of. And so that's God's will for all men. That's God's will that they all be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, we're going to look in John here for a little bit because there are, there's an aspect of this truth that John is talking about the Lord and, and who the Lord is, who God is. And we're going to begin with Pilate asking what is truth uh, in this, uh, this morning, John 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou the, a king then? Now you remember the Pharisees handed the Lord over to Pilate so that he would crucify the Lord. The Pil Pilate's questioning the prisoner, the accused. And he says, Art thou a king? The Jews accused him of claim, er, proclaiming himself as a king uh, over Israel. And he asked him, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause... 
came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now, Pilate goes on to say, Pilate, Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said thus, this, he went outside to the Jews, said unto them, I find no fault in him at all. So, Pilate's question, what is truth? Christ came into the world to be a witness unto the truth. There is a truth that is revealed throughout the scriptures about God's purpose for Christ to come into the world. And that truth is throughout the Word of God. And Christ came into the world to bear witness unto the truth. And he says, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now you remember a lot of discussion, we're going to look at just a couple passages uh, where the Lord's having a uh, discussion with the Pharisees. And they're accusing him of proclaiming himself to be God, falsely proclaiming himself to be God, the Son of God, and so forth. But that's why the Father sent him into the world. Remember, again, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Lord comes as the loving Son, the faithful Son, the faithful child of God, and he submits himself to the Father's word. He only teaches and proclaims the things the Father gave him to speak, and he, he explains that if you know him, then you know the Father. And he's revealing the love of the Father for the world uh, in his ministry and demonstrating God is holy. He's separate from his creation, but he's perfect. He's the holiest of the holiest. No God is above him. There's nobody that compares to him. And it's his love is greater than any love of any. There's no other God. He's the only God. And his love is greater. His grace is greater than any other example of grace. And so all the attributes of God as the perfect holy God did separate him from anything that man has ever experienced before. And... So, turn with me now to John 1, and verse 1. We're going to start in verse 1 <clears throat> of the book of John. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Turn to verse uh, 12. God will have all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. Christ came into the word world to save sinners. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, what is truth? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Word, capital W, the living Word, is full of grace and truth. And the verse 17 says, And the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So that truth is describing not all truth in the Word of God, in one big package, but specifically the grace and truth of God's plan of redemption that is revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ that demonstrates the Father's love for his creation. So, there's God is a holy and just God. He must punish sin. But in through his Son, his only begotten Son, the Son, his beloved Son, he makes a sacrifice that all who trust in God throughout the dispensations and the dis different gospel messages would be able to receive God's grace and love, be a recipient of his grace and love for eternity. For the glory of the Father's purpose to glorify the Son, the Son's purpose to glorify the Father, and 
Who was it that, that was at Mount Sinai when the law came down? The manifestation of God before the prophets, including Moses, is always God the Son. And many are going to be shocked one day to learn that worship Jehovah and they and I'm thinking of a specific group that doesn't regard the Lord Jesus Christ as part of the Godhead, the Trinity. Instead, he, he comes to be in the birth incarnation, and then he, he becomes the Son of God after birth. And they have all different kinds of strange ideas about who the Lord Jesus Christ is instead of the second person of the Godhead. And at Mount Sinai, a pre-incarnate manifestation of God in, on the earth, he thunders from Mount Sinai and gives his law to Moses. Now it says the law was given by Moses. That's the same Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator, comes and reveals the truth of the second covenant, the new covenant, uh, which made the old covenant old, is the new covenant, that the blood of the new covenant was ratified at Calvary, and he reveals the Father's redemptive plan in him being made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So in the beginning was the Word, the Word was, the, uh, word was God, the, and he's the word was full of, is full of grace and truth. So what is truth? It's revealed in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at uh, chapter 8. Uh, on your way, stop at chapter 3. And that's why I mentioned earlier that we're going to talk about verse 16 of John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why is it that the Word was made flesh and that we, through him, through his incarnation, we all men that believe in him would have everlasting life? Why but Calvary? Calvary is the answer. And... Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, the Apostle Paul says that Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's the purpose that's being referred to in John 3, 16, that Christ came into the world to save sinners. And it wasn't until after the cross that it was revealed, through most, mostly through the revelation given through Paul, about what was accomplished at the cross as part of God, the unfolding of God's redemptive plan and full revelation of what was accomplished there. But um, you are in the family of God because of the Father's love. Go to John 8. Verse 26. I have many things to say and judge of you, but he that sent me is true. Now again, what is truth? He that sent me is truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. The Father that sent him, the Lord Jesus Christ says, is true. And I speak in the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto him, unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. For he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And as he spake these words unto him, many believed. And Jesus said, uh, he's, um, verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, continuing in his word, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? The truth shall make you free. So the Lord reveals the love that his Father has for the world. He only speaks the things that his Father gave him to speak. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ ends up going to the cross and he says, when I'm lifted up, you're going to understand the things that I taught to you about the Father's love for his creation. 
And you shall know the truth, and that specific truth about how God loves the world, the redemptive unfolding of the, God's redemptive plan in Christ. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered, we are Abraham's seed, we're never in bondage, and so forth. Go to John chapter 14. What is truth? It includes God's purpose to redeem the fallen sons of Adam through his son by making him a sacrifice at Calvary. Uh, John chapter 14 now, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I want to back up. I'm in 14. Uh, and go read with, with me in verse 6 first. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, what is truth? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but my, by me. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye shall know him and have seen him. So Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Known me. He's saying, We'll know the Father if you show us him. Have you, don't you know me yet? He says. And he, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? So, you know, there, in Isaiah, there's a title. It has the title of the Father. What's the answer to this? It's not a riddle. When you see the Son, what are you seeing? The Godhead. He is, God is three, but God is one. They, they act in unison as far as their three independent personalities. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But they act as one. They're one God. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the physical manifestation of the Godhead to man. And he appears pre-incarnate appearances throughout the Old Testament. But here he's given a body of flesh, mortality, that he might go to the cross and reveal the Godhead to, uh, and he reveals the Godhead and the Father to the disciples. And he says, um, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Look at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even, notice, what is truth? Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come unto you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. He's going to the cross, set for the cross. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall also live. At that day... Ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself unto him. Judah saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thou, thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, God reveals through the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, his love, and we've seen in these verses that the Word is full of grace and truth, God the Son, the second person of the Godhead, that the Father is true, and that the Holy Spirit uh, is the Spirit of truth. Again, they're the Godhead. They're equally perfect, they're equally God, and God reveals His truth 
What is truth, it's his redemptive purpose mainly through the Son and God's plan, not only to create all things, but then to come down and to be made flesh and die for his creation. And that's God's love demonstrated uh, through the cross. 